everybody, it's WB, back in the bunker again, as they say. Tonight I wanted to do a video comparing a couple of uh, firearms with a similar lineage to one another. One is the Yugo M92 AK-47 pistol. The other would be his big brother, if you will, the Yugo M70 AB2. I wanted to do a little comparison on these two and maybe compare and contrast some of the major considerations, point out a few of the differences, as well as some of the similarities. Um, I was thinking to myself, if I could only have one of these, if I was in a scenario where I could only have one of these, which one would I pick? Now we're talking about an absolute scenario, there's no, consider, uh, no other considerations like what's it, where are you going, what's it going to be used for, is it going to be a vehicle weapon or um, a long, longer range weapon. Uh, none of those things are going to come into consideration. It's just a choice, one or the other, which one would you pick? I want to take a look at a comparison based on uh, three different categories. And I'll call them the three P's. Um, number one is price. Price is something that always comes into consideration. Uh, the second would be performance. And another one particularly important with these two variations is portability. Um, that's one of the things I like about both of these is their ability to be compact and very portable. Now in this comparison, I, I think it would be appropriate to point out that Mikhail Kalishnikov passed away today. Today's December 23rd, 2013. He was 94 years old. Obviously he was the inventor of the Kalishnikov series of rifles. Um, if you think about it, that's quite a lifespan, 94 years on this earth. Uh, regardless of what you think about the Soviet Union, communism, uh, all the ramifications of his invention, he definitely has left a legacy, uh, an enduring legacy in these bad boys. Uh, they've proven to stand the test of time and they're still going strong today. So as we take a look at these two, more or less side by side here, I'd like to uh, make a few comparisons, point out a few contrasts. The M70 underfolder. I guess the main difference that, that I can see, slightly longer barrel. The barrel on this one is 16 and a half inches, roughly. It does have the grenade sights and it has the bulged receiver. It's a 1.5 millimeter reinforced receiver and obviously the underfolder. Both of these will run standard AK-47 magazines with no modifications required. Um, this uh, M92 came with wood hand grips and on and uh, a little button on the end of the muzzle. Really kind of ugly. Uh, you can see I've switched it out with a flash hider. And on both of these, uh, really the, the only modification, significant modifications, modifications have been the quad rails on the M92. A few minor additions to it. I did put a Hogue pistol grip on both of these as just my preference. And I don't know how well the camera's going to pick this up, but as I hold them end to end, try to line up the backs of the receivers as much as possible. I don't know how it looks on camera, that, but that looks pretty close here. Really the difference we're talking about here is about five to six inches in barrel length. Uh, it does look like the gas tube on the pistol is slightly shorter. Maybe, as I look at it here, if I line the gas tubes up, we're probably looking at about maybe half an inch difference. But in terms of portability, um, the pistol is going to have to take first place in that consideration, hands down, with the M70 coming in as a, a close second and a viable alternative. Now, in terms of the price consideration, uh, there's a few things worth mentioning here. We're in, we're just before Christmas, two days before Christmas. So Merry Christmas, everybody, uh, by the way. Um, and basically the difference in prices between where we're at today and, and where things were at the beginning of this year are just night and day. The prices are, are fluctuating quite a bit, especially with the holidays. But, um, but today's prices are, like I say, a world apart from where they were uh, 10, to, 10 to 12 months ago. Um, so basically I'm using a particular website as a basis of comparison, but as of today, the, the Yugo M92 pistol I've seen advertised for as low as $399. Now that's on a website called J&G Gun Sales. It's J&G Gun Sales. And um, on the same website, the, um, 
M70 AB2 underfolder, I believe is, was it 589, if I'm not mistaken. I've got it pulled up on my uh, monitor back there. I'll, I'll double check that. Um, additionally, uh, I saw something that was very interesting on Slick Guns. I believe it's slickguns.com or slickguns.net. I have it pulled up on the other monitor over there. Uh, but what it is, is actually the M92 pistol with the original wood hand guards on it with a barrel extender and with a folding stock and basically that is priced at $579. I'll double check all this and annotate it if there's anything I need to correct but um, that's another thing to consider um, you know when you're looking at the overall picture and the price point at uh, $579 with a folding stock and the barrel extension my really my only question at that point would be does the barrel extension uh, enhance the performance versus the 10 and a half inch barrel uh, on the, the pistol. Uh, and if the answer is yes, I would say if they were both priced equally, I might just go for that pistol um, with the folding stock already uh, already installed and with the barrel extension. Now, one of the reasons for that is you have the ability at that point to make it into a short barrel rifle. Now, you would have to get the ATF tax stamp in order to take that barrel extension off. So again, with the folding stock uh, and the barrel extension, with another couple hundred bucks, you could have basically a short barrel rifle, and that kind of opens up a whole new world of capabilities. So that would be a strong contender if it was between one or the other at the same price point. Again, with the folding stock on the pistol, I might just um, opt for that. And so one additional note on the performance uh, comparison between the two, the M70 is imported and is required to comply with 922R compliance issues. So a number of the parts have been switched out, including the trigger group. It does have the TAPCO trigger on it, uh, whereas the pistols, uh, the M92 is imported as a pistol. It is not required to comply with 922R, and as a result, none of the original parts are switched out on the M92 pistols. They're, they basically come as they are from the former Yugoslavia and uh, in comparison I think that the changes that are made to comply with 922R are in many ways positive. I prefer the trigger on the M70 versus the M92 and in general it's just a little bit um, smoother, a little bit looser. The M92 is very tight in terms of the safety, in terms of the trigger, just not as smooth a feel uh, in operating the M92 versus the M70. It does loosen up over time as you could, as you would expect, but again, that's just another another point wor worth noting. So, given all the considerations that we've been through here, which one of these do you choose? Do you go for the superior ability to engage targets at a further distance of the M70 underfolder, or would you go with the portability and compactness of the M92 in general overall badassness? Given everything we've talked about and all the considerations, if I could only have one of these, I think I would go with the M70 underfolder. So those are my thoughts on the matter. Um, I'd be interested to hear what you guys think. I enjoyed uh, sharing this information with you and look forward to catching you on the next video. Thanks a lot. Merry Christmas, everybody.